As we've seen in the last couple of videos, a lot of things were added to Sublime Text in version 3.2. One of those was the incremental diff that allows you to track changes made to your file in this edit session or based on their status in Git, and also the ability to track the status of files as a whole in Git as well. Now, amongst all of the other things that were added in that version of Sublime Text, there's one more thing we're going to cover in this video series because the developers of Sublime Text also have a Git client named Sublime Merge, and they have integrated the two. So in today's video, we're going to talk about those cross integrations between Sublime Text and Sublime Merge. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here, and welcome to this video on the integrations that exist between Sublime Text and Sublime Merge. Before we get into that though, as always, I'd like to remind you that if you're finding these videos in any way helpful, useful, informative, anything uh, like that, if you're getting any value out of them at all, please do use those buttons down below the video to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover in a future video, you can leave those down in the comment section below. And you can also hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. The topic we are talking about today is the integrations that exist between Sublime Text and Sublime Merge. So let's go ahead and hop right on into that. Hello, everybody. I'm breaking into this week's video with an update on last week's video on Git integration. Near the end of the video, we were talking about all of the different status icons that can appear to the right of files in the sidebar if they're tracked by Git. And I totally forgot to describe one of them. And that is the indicator for staged modifications to files. And there should be somewhere on the screen an image capture pointing that out. But basically, that's an indicator that's applied to files that have been modified modified and all of those modifications have been staged. So as you can see, the icon is the same color as a general modified file and the same shape as all of the other indicators that indicate that there is a staged change of some sort, be it deletion, addition, or modification, which I forgot to mention. So there you have it. Uh, sorry, I forgot that. And let's get back to this week's video. Now, it should go without saying that in order to use these sorts of integrations, you need to have Sublime Merge installed. If you don't have it installed, the same commands will exist in the same locations, but when you try to run them, you'll get a dialog box telling you that you should install Sublime Merge. And for the unaware, Sublime Merge is a Git client that was written by Sublime HQ, which is the same developer as that which wrote Sublime Text. They share a common code base and a geniality, and as such, they work very well together. There are five different integrations that exist between Sublime Text and Sublime Merge. They all revolve around the idea of switching from Sublime Text directly into Sublime Merge, making sure the appropriate repository is selected, and then carrying out some action for you. And they're all informative actions by default, investigating the history of your repository and things of that nature. And all of these commands are context sensitive and apply to the appropriate Git repository. And what we mean by that is uh, if you just have a single file opened and no folders, but that file is tracked by a Git repository, Sublime will detect that and the commands will work with Sublime Merge in the appropriate repository. Similarly, if you have a fo folder open in your sidebar that is tracked by Git, all of the commands will work in there as well. And both of those work together as well at the same time. So if you have a folder open that's tracked by Git and a file from a completely different Git repository that's not even in your sidebar, depending on what file you have active at the time you execute the commands that we're going to show in the video, the appropriate repository will be selected, which I think is key because that means that no matter what sort of project you're working on or how many repositories it covers, uh, you always get to the repository that you're interested in. And these commands also exist, as we'll see, in a couple of different places. They exist in the command palette and they also exist on the context menu of items in the sidebar and also in files as well. So depending on uh, your workflow, whether you use the sidebar extensively or not, or you use context menus extensively or not, or you use the command palette extensively or not, whichever way you do all of this, you can get access to these commands fairly easily. 
The one thing there isn't by default are key bindings, but we'll show at the end of the video that it's actually pretty easy to set some of those up if you'd like for the more common actions that you take while you're working between Sublime Text and Sublime Merge. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to open a project here. As I said, you don't have to do that, but uh, we want to show the uh, integrations that are available in the sidebar. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to use just this override audit project that is the source to my override audit package and open a file. We'll open the top level plugin uh, like so. Now, as we saw in the previous video, we can tell that this is a file that's tracked by Git because down there in the status bar, there's an indication that this file is on branch master in a Git repository. And it doesn't have any number next to it, so the repository is currently clean. One thing you might want to do on a fairly regular basis is actually open the repository that your files are in because perhaps it's the start of your day and you need to pull down changes or it's nearing the end of the day and you want to push some branches up to share with others or uh, anything of that nature. Now there's a few different ways that we can do this. One way which we saw in the previous video is if you click on the status bar where the branch is. Sublime Merge will immediately open up in your repository. And I'm just going to maximize that window like so. And we can see it is indeed a clean repository. There are no changes. And I will switch back to Sublime. Another way that you can do that is by using the context menu in any file that is tracked by Git. And when you press that, there's an item down here labeled Open Git Repository. And when you pick that, again, we just switch automatically directly back to Sublime Merge. That same command is also available in the sidebar on any file or folder. Here we can see it on the top level folder, on a folder inside there, and even on files as well. And one other place that you can do this, of course, is in the command palette. Uh, if you were to search for Merge, you can see all of the commands here and there's this one labeled open repository picking that again opens sublime merge or if sublime merge is already running all of these integrations will just communicate with the uh, existing instance you don't continuously get new windows so that is uh, the first uh, integration that we have here just the, the simple ability to get at sublime merge directly from text no matter where we are one of the features I find very useful in Sublime Merge is its ability to find and filter commits based on various criteria. And one of the uh, integrations we're going to cover here is the ability to find all of the commits that modify files within a certain folder within your project. And you can imagine the... Uh, the use for this, if you are working on uh, a web page, you might want to find not only changes made to one page, but all of the other pages stored in the same part uh, of the directory structure because maybe they're all related in some fashion. Or if you are a software developer, you might not be interested in just changes to one file in a particular library, but all of the files in a certain subset of that library and things of that nature. Now, in order to get at this one, we can use the command palette and use the Sublime Merge folder history option, which will give us the folder history for the folder that the current file is in. And this is also available over here from the context menu. We can see it right here for folder history. And it, of course, also works on the uh, folders in the file as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the source directory here. And we see we immediately jump into Sublime Merge and it's opened its find, find panel with a search for all commits that are modifying files in the path source slash star. So I can see changes just to the source code of my package and not to say the resources and key bindings and things of that nature. And then we could be looking through here to find a various change or see where things happened. Folder history is pretty useful. I use it on a fairly regular basis to figure out changes that have been made to different aspects of projects, particularly when I'm collaborating with uh, other people. Uh, Probably more likely you're interested in history of individual files and not just all of the files in a particular directory. And of course, we can do that as well as we can see the context menu has an item for file history. This is also available in the 
uh, entries over here in the uh, sidebar, but of course it only appears on files. It doesn't appear on folders because they're not files, so they don't have a history. And it, of course, is also available in the command palette, so if we were to do merge, we could do file history. And again, as soon as we pick that, immediately we are opening up uh, Sublime Merge, and it's again gone to the Find panel, and now it's using a file uh, filter in the search to find all of the commits across the entire repository that did something to this particular file. And that, of course, is also quite handy for being able to introspect changes that have happened. If you knew something used to be there and now it's not, you could go through and see where those changes came from or when something was added, things along those lines. This is also a very handy feature to have. The Find panel in Sublime Merge is pretty powerful. Not only can you search for all commits that match files in a certain subsection of your project or all commits that modify a certain file in your project by exact name and path. You can also dial in that search to be able to see commits that changed specific portions of a file as well. So by way of example, in order to do that, you have to have a file that is open and tracked by Git and then select some lines of the file, say for example, these ones, and then we can execute this command. Now, this command is only available from the context menu that you get from inside of a file, and we can see there's an item in here labeled line history. This one doesn't appear in the command palette, and it doesn't appear in the context menus in the sidebar either. But when you choose it, you jump directly to Sublime Merge, and now we can see that in addition to searching just for the file uh, commits that modify this particular file, we're also dialed into commits that specifically modified lines 8 through 15 in that file, which is a much smaller range. And again, this is something that you could craft yourself here in Sublime Merge if you wanted to, but the contextual nature of being able to find exact lines of code in your file and say, what's the history of this? Who's been noodling with this part of this file? When and how and who? It's a lot easier to do that when you're looking right at the file versus coming over here and typing this in and then trying to figure out roundabout what part of the file you're interested in. I work on a few collaborative projects with a large group of people, and I've found that file history, being able to dial in exactly who has been changing this one small section of a file and when and why, particularly invaluable. Sometimes you wanna just know on a, in a file as a whole, who's changed what, when, and why. And the feature for that is Git Blame. And Sublime Merge does have a blame view, and it is an integration that is available to us here from Sublime Text. And you can see that in the context menu in a file as blame file. It also appears in the context menu for files in the sidebar, as we can see, but not on folders because you can't blame folders uh, in Git because Git doesn't actually track folders, it only tracks files. And this is also available in the command palette as we can see here. If you search for commands that match merge, there's a blame file option as well. And picking that opens the, mer the uh, sublime merge blame view for a particular file where we can see uh, for this file, all of the changes that have been made to that file, and we can also see uh, exactly what commits each of those were made in. And clicking on one of these, of course, shows you all of the other places that match that particular commit as well. So you can see exactly where these things came from. And if you hover over, you can focus the view on the exact commit and view the tree and see exactly what it was that was modified in that particular file. My commit messages are particularly prolific, but we can dial in and see uh, different changes and files on a file-by-file -file basis there as well. So depending on what sort of history you need, whether you need to know how files in a particular folder have changed, how a particular file has changed, how particular parts of a file has changed, or even on a whole global basis, who's changing what where, Sublime Merge can do that for you. And these integrations between text and merge make it very easy to get at the part you want without having to craft and find and search around in your repository yourself, which is particularly great if you work on really big projects.
Now, as we've seen through the course of the video, these commands are available in a variety of places. They're available in the context menu for uh, files that you're editing. They're also available in the context menu for the files and folders in the sidebar and which items you see there depends on whether you click on a file or a folder. And of course, they're also in the uh, command palette under Sublime Merge as well if you want to get them that way. Now, these commands are particularly useful, particularly the uh, the open repository command, which is your gateway to doing anything uh, at all in, in Git that doesn't involve introspecting the history of your project. Now, there aren't key bindings assigned to these commands by default, but you could add them if you wanted to because Sublime is a very, very customizable. And to do that, you would go up to the preferences menu and choose view uh, preferences uh, key bindings. You could also do that from the command palette. Here I'm going to use view package file and look for my user window key map like so to open that same file that would open in the right hand pane of the key bindings window because there's not a default here. There's not really anything I need to uh, look at there. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in these bindings like so. Now, of course, the keys that you actually use are completely up to you. This is just something I pulled out here. Control Shift G followed by pressing O to open this repository or H to get the folder history or F to get the file history, L to get the Lime history and B to open the blame. And with these in place, and again, you would choose whichever keys you want, you could go ahead and very easily uh, do these sorts of things. Now, of course, uh, as I said, I keep my user package in Git. So let's say I wanted to open the repository for my user package so that I could commit these key bindings to it. One way to do that would be to type open repo in here like so to find the command or use the uh, context menu as well. But now that I have this key binding, I can press Control Shift G and O and a new window opens up that I'll maximize, and now I'm looking at a Sublime Merge window for my user package, which is you know insanely useful when you're using Git uh, all throughout your day. And similarly, we could do other things in here. For example, if we were to jump over to this file and we wanted the line history to know when this particular item changed. Again, we could use the context menu. I'm using a key on my keyboard for that, but you might be using the mouse as well. But if I want the line history, now that I've set up that key binding, I can press Control Shift G and L. And here I am looking at the line history for that item as well. And of course, if I wanted to have somebody to blame for uh, a terrible bug in this file, I could press Control Shift G and B and open the blame view and realize that I'm the only one that's ever edited this file. So that covers the integrations between Sublime Text and Sublime Merge. Just five simple commands, but I think it makes your workflow in Git a lot easier if you're using Merge to be able to open it very easily on your repository, introspect history, and basically just swap back and forth as you're working throughout the day. I've found it an invaluable boost to my own workflow in Git in my day-to-day -day life, both in my professional and personal projects. So I hope you found this uh, enlightening and informative. And if you have, please Please use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And of course, you can always leave questions and comments and suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover about Sublime Text down in the comments section below or on Twitter at ODATNerd. But until the next video, this is ODATNerd asking you to please have a sublime day.